<laughs> cool. Okay. Um, so uh, this is a talk on Azure Service Bus, um, but specifically using it at scale. So quick show of hands. Who knows what Azure Service Bus is? Who has no idea what I'm talking about? This is going to be a long 15 minutes for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so basically, um, for, for the people who have no idea what I'm talking about, Azure Service Bus is a message broker um, provided by Microsoft, um, and it allows you, as all message brokers do, to, to send a message to it, and it will uh, pass that message on, or, or you, can, you can subscribe to that message from other places. Um, this talk specifically is about the limitations when you're doing that at a lot, like a, a high scale, so either a high scale in terms of uh, size of message, so you're sending it large messages, or a high scale in terms of um, a lot of messages. Um, so here I've got um, uh, you know, size of message, quantity of message, like we mentioned. Um, there's concepts in uh, Azure Service Bus and uh, most message brokers that I'm aware of, of uh, effectively queues and topics. Topics are sometimes known as pub sub. Um, this is basically, um, you know, you get a, a, a sort of queue, a, a topic or a pub sub is, is effectively a local uh, queue for, e for, each, um, for each topic. Um, there is a limitation on the size of that usually. And also cost, um, go into cost in a little bit, um, but that can be quite significant if you're not careful. Yeah, okay, so these are some solutions that um, that sort of come across recently um, when investigating this. Um, so in terms of size of messages, there's a, a type of pattern called a claim check pattern. I'll go into all of these in more detail, um, which you can use to essentially, um, instead of passing the information through on a message, you can tell, um, you can tell the, the subscriber of that message where to go for that information instead of actually passing that information through. You can use compression, um, just, you know, you can compress any text anywhere. Um, also specifically with Azure Service Bus, there's a concept of a premium tier. There's actually three tiers with, with Azure Service Bus. Um, the first one is free, but it doesn't allow you to use topics and it's limited. I can't remember, I think it's 10 million messages or something like that. Um, the standard one, is also limited to 10 million messages, but it's not free and you can use topics. Um, and then the, the, the premium tier, you, you, it's a completely different payment model. I'll, I'll come to that in a bit more detail. And then in terms of quantity of messages, we've got um, some batch functionality, which we'll, we'll go into and, and sort of explore what that means. Okay, we'll start with size of messages. Um, so the first thing that you can do, um, this claim chat pattern I started describing earlier, so you can send a message. Um, essentially, you say, uh, here's some data, or uh, and here's a pointer to the rest of the data. So if we're talking about Azure, you might say, I've got a Cosmos document or something like that. Uh, you know, Kev's going about Mongo. You might say, I've got a, a Mongo entry, whatever. Um, or you might give it a bit of the information, and then you might say, go here for the rest. Um, so for example, images or something like that, you might say the, an image is lo located in this location. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's uh, point one and two. Um, yeah, and the, the, the Cosmos database is, is the third one. Okay, compression. I mean, uh, I'm guessing, has anybody not heard of the concept of um, like gzip or something like that? Not used it? No, okay. So you can use that, you can compress a message, you can put that compressed message on the service bus. The only downside to that is that then the consumer of that has to know that you've compressed it and, and obviously there's some uh, processing overhead in, in decompressing it and turning it into something that you might actually want to use. Um, but it, it generally works fine if, um, you know, if, you, if you've got, it tends to be with text compression, it works, it works okay. Um, also, if you use it on too small a message, it will actually make it bigger. So if it's like 
10 characters, you might find it, it makes it a bit bigger because of the overhead of actually compressing it. And that's an example. Um, appreciate that the text isn't that big, um, but you know, like, I don't think there's anyone that said that they couldn't, um, uh, that they hadn't, hadn't used the sort of gzip before. Um, but basically just uh, setting up a memory stream at the top, uh, setting up a, a gzip stream, um, and then and then just writing right into that stream, uh, closing it off and then returning it, um, and then at the bottom as an example, you know, that just compresses the message and then and then sends it on. Okay, premium tier. Um, this was kind of what we were talking about with cost. So premium tier, you pay um, by the hour, um, and it costs quite a lot of money. It's like uh, six hundred fifty seven hundred dollars for an hour. I've not checked this morning, but I'm guessing that's around about six hundred and fifty to seven hundred pounds now. Um, you get for ten million operations, uh, this is only standard and, and premium. Uh, on standard you're paying about ten to fifteen dollars for the same thing. Um, but you pay per operation. So um once you get over I think it's ten million that you're limited to, um that, that cost starts to go up, whereas the, the 10 million operations on um, on premium is is it's always going to be um, it's always going to be the 650 to to 700 dollars. Um, the other the other limitation is um, the standard the standard tier has a, a limit of 256k, which is quite big. I mean, you know. 256k is, is a lot of text that you can fit in a message. Um, but if you need bigger, you can up it to 100 meg, which is colossal. I mean, you've got bigger problems if you're sending 100 meg a message around. Okay, quantity of message. So um, this basically, you've got a lot of messages and you're sending them and the biggest problem you've got is latency. So the biggest thing is that you're gonna keep on calling the server and saying, I wanna send a message, I wanna send a message. Um, so what you can do is you can uh, you can call you can sort of group them together. Um, so that's just a, a little bit of an example of you know you've set up a brand new uh, list of messages. Um, I'm going through it a hundred times and I'm just adding some message text, um, and then effectively just sending all the messages in one go. Um, the thing at the bottom basically says that you are limited. Um, so if you're limited to two hundred fifty-six k for um, a message that's per operation so that's one operation send messages async which means that if you've got um if you've got two messages at 200k each you've exceeded your limit you can't you can't group them together um what this sort of function here does is it it basically chunks them for you so um if for example they were 100k each it'd chunk two of them send it or you know, chunk two of them, and then and then you call triad. I think it's triad message on uh, on the um, on this the uh, object. So you you call that object, you do triad message, and then it'll go. I can't add any more messages. You've exceeded your limit, and it's clever enough to know what your limit is. So you know, it'll never say it if you're on if you're on hundred meg, or you know, it, it's unlikely to. Uh, okay, so prefetch and batch. Um, this is the idea where you basically um, on the receive the same idea, um, but the other thing you can ask it to do is kind of intelligently read ahead a little bit. Um, so it'll it'll kind of go ahead and it'll try and get messages that you haven't actually read yet, and then cache them locally. So it's kind of like do the batching for me. Um, so you can use either or you can use both. Using both, I've never quite managed to find a sweet spot where they don't sort of tread on each other's toes. Um, so yeah, it allows, allows for retrieval of multiple messages at the same time. Um, it can increase speed quite a lot. Um, and, um, but there's a, there's a caveat. So basically, there's two modes to, to, re uh, to receive data in, um, service bus and I think most message brokers are the same um, basically you can receive it in a, in a method called receive and delete which is basically give me the message I've now got the message you've not got the message anymore so if I lose this message 
I, I can't go back to you, I can't get the message, it's gone, it's consumed. Um, which is fine, but then if you receive a chunk of 100 messages and get through 50, you've lost 50 messages. Um, peak lock is a bit different, so that basically forces you to confirm that the message is processed. Um, but obviously the downside there is if you receive 100 messages and um, you don't process 50 of them for whatever reason, it takes too long or whatever, there's a timeout on that. So uh, I think the default is 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, it'll, it'll put all them back in the queue. But in that 10 minutes, they're all locked. So nothing else can process them. Okay, so this is an example of a batch receive. Um, again, uh, so at, at the top, it's just using that service bus client to, to sort of, um, uh, this, is, this is the, I don't, for those of you that have used Azure Service Bus in the past, the SDKs is like three versions of it. This is the third version and, and the definitive, I hope. Um, what I do is basically you set up your Service Bus client and then you ask the Service Bus client for a receiver, which is that um, on line 11. Um, I've just told it to use peak lock there on, uh, on line 9. Um, and then you just, the, the, on line 14, receive messages async. If you're receiving one, it's just receive message async and it'll give you a single message back. Then you just iterate through it. Um, there's actually, um, when you're receiving in batch, there's apparently a difference. So if you call um, receive messages async and pass it a maximum number of messages, it will process them slightly differently. Um, but I've never quite, uh, I've never quite observed the difference. But apparently it's more efficient to do that. And this is an example of a prefetch. So there's a lot of code on here, appreciate that, and it's, it's very, very small. Um, but again, same sort of idea. Um, the key thing is there, it's just telling it uh, you've got a prefetch count of 100. Um, and what I've done with this, rather than actually pulling it, I've just said um, request a processor instead of a, so on line 12, there's a create processor. Um, and then on 16, I just say start processing. And that just reads it. Um, in an event sort of style, um, but it'll it'll read ahead like a hundred at a time and bring them back. Okay, any questions?